God, we look to you tonight. Above the singing, God, above the music, above the songs, let your name be lifted high, Jesus. Let your name be honoured, God. And we commit all that we are to you, God, and everything that we do. And we reach towards you, Jesus.
I, I would like to, in, um, to introduce myself. I'm Lily Warner, sister of Pelham Warner, and I welcome everybody to this ceremony. I would like to do an opening prayer, John chapter 14, 26 to 29. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, Peace I leave with you, peace I give to you, not as the world hath giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. The word of the Lord. I would like to introduce my sister Marie Motley to do the eulogy. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Marie Mortley. I'm the sister of Pelham. <coughs> For all of us who are blessed enough to know and love Pelham and the warm memory that each of us held within our heart. Pelham was the son of Lushington and Emily Warner. He was the father of Ashton Pelham King Warner, brother of Judith Warner, Yvonne Phillip, Marie Mortley, Clive Warner, Lily Patricia, Patty Warner, and Albert Warner, brother-in-law of Simeon Mortley, sister-in-law of Delarita Warner and Sandra Warner. During his life, he worked in in ballistic department in Port of Spain. He later worked on the architecture designing many houses in Trinidad and Tobago. Today we find peace knowing that he has gone home to his God and joined his parents and elder sister, Judith Warner. Each of us was touched on some way by Pella throughout the life. We have shared many a laughter, hug, and cries with him over the memories of the past. Pelham life was not perfect, but it was that he lived freely. We will cherish his memory forever. He'll, he'll leave behind his son Ashton Pelham Warner King, Uncle Herbert Ramsey of, of United Kingdom, and 90 nieces and nephew, 20 great nieces and nephew, and numerous other family and friends. Annette Oliver, and a dear friend of Pelham.
I guess it's still morning. Morning, everyone. It's always a joy when we come together to see friends, old acquaintances, especially old acquaintances, stirs up so much memories. Especially on this occasion, when we think about funerals, we really think about how people coming together to encourage, to strengthen one another, to give comfort to one another. And so this is what we want to really do. There we go. This is what we want to do. We want to see how we can gain some comfort. How can we do that? We recognize indeed that today we live in a world that is part of our existence. We live for a moment. We enjoy the time that we live. And then that comes. During that time period, we realize that we have that privilege of enjoying and making a name for ourselves. Those things that we do touch each one and every one of us. In the case of Pelham, that's what happened. Some, we enjoy his company. Some, okay, it's time to move on. This is because when we view in someone, we view them in the moment. And in that moment, there are times that we might want to laugh at him. There are times that we want to cry with him. There are times that we are proud of him. There are times we are sad because of what he does. I may be a little biased. By the way, I forget to mention my name. Most of you all know it. I'm Albert, the last of the water clan. But we appreciate indeed the things that Pelham did. We recognize that we get some encouragement from him. But it's, it's like a sickness. Sometimes when you think about a sickness, the first time we start taking remedies, home remedy, remedies. But as the sickness continues, we reach the point that, well, we might have to go to the doctor. So that's the next step. But then the sickness might reach to the point of death. What happens next? Here in this audience, none of us can do anything beyond that point. We might sympathize, we might feel sorry, we might grieve, but that's all we could do. What's the next step? This is why we appreciate what the Bible has to say. Because we recognize we have to go to a power beyond us humans. That power, we know, is God. And, we, and he proved the things that he did. The sun, the moon, the stars, humans. He proved that he has the power over death. He has the power to have things live and live forever. No man could promise that to anyone. We might all want to live, but then when that death comes, we have to wait for that, po that power that, that is higher than man. But what about the debt? How does the Bible give us some direction as regards the dead? Why this is so important? You know, today when we hear someone die, we use expressions like, well, he's in a better, he's going to a better place. Or we might hear the expression that, well, he's in good hands. What does the Bible say? I'd like to look at the Bible book of Ecclesiastes. Perhaps you can follow along with me. Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. And hear what, hear what verse 5 offers us. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5. For the living know that they will die. But the dead know nothing at all, nor do they have any more re reward, 
because all memory of them are forgotten. What do you understand by that expression? Think about it. When someone dies, it's the opposite of life. So, whilst we are alive, yes, we could encourage, we could do things like Palam did. But now in death, the scriptures say, just like how he is lying here now, nothing. You can go pinch him. You can do something to him. No response. Why? Opposite of living. And that's death. So this is why we have to go to that next level. And why this is so important for us to go to that ne next level is simply because with death, we realize that we have a void. Especially someone who we have come close to, we have a big void because we cannot do anything for that person. However, the Bible gives us further encouragement and gives us more explanation of what God will do. We want to look at the book of Job. In Job, the 14th chapter, and I assume my tablet comes up. Job, the 14th chapter, we want to look at verse, verse 12 through 15 of Job. So Job chapter 14 and verse 12, it has this to say. Okay, that's why I bought a Bible. Okay, here we go. Job chapter 14 and verse 12 through 15. Man also lies down and does not get up until heaven is no more. They will not wake up, nor will they be aroused from their sleep. But listen to this part and see how the Bible give us encouragement. Verse 13 says, this is Job speaking, Oh, that in the grave you will conceal me, that you will hide me until your anger passes by, that you will set a time limit for me and remember me. Question that is asked in verse 14. If a man dies, can he live again? I will wait all the days of my compulsory service until my relief come. 15, most people are familiar with these words. You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the work of your hands. Did you notice what the scripture here encourages? Oh, sorry, when you look at that, it might be a little worded, a little different. I am quoting from the New World Translation. I believe this is the King James Version. But pay attention to the words, and we realize what the word has given us, the direction that the word has given us. It helps us appreciate God will be turning his attention to those who have died. When we look at the scripture, Job, who was a faithful worshiper of the true God, he had that hope. Death was not going to be the end of it all. And he was helping us appreciate that even his creator has a longing to perform resurrection. But that's not all. That's, that's not all. The Bible gives us a further explanation of how things is in the book of John, the fifth chapter, and verses 28 and 29. John, 
That's the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the fifth chapter, verse 28 and 29. It states, Do not marvel, be amazed at this, for the hour is coming in which all those in the memorial tombs will hear his voice and come out, those who did good things, to a resurrection of life, and those who practice bad things to a resurrection of judgment. Interesting scripture. Interesting scripture. Think what the scripture is helping us appreciate. God is going to resurrect all those in the memorial tomb. Whose memory? God's memory. You think we here could combine our memory banks and equals God? If you put all of the memories in this world, no. He can count the stars and he can name them. There are billions of them. So God is saying to his words that he is going to resurrect all those in his memory who have died. Nevertheless, we also get some further direction. Two types of resurrection is mentioned there. The first one, those who practice what is good. That class will be resurrected. So they already have come to know who God is, know his requirements, and serve him accordingly. But the scripture also mentions those who will be judged. Now, you might think, well, well, when will God judge these? Will it be when they die right now, like, like in case of Pelham? Or is there a time period, something has to take place before that judgment comes about? The Bible did not leave us in the dark. Hence the reason why it's so important for us, really, when we want to talk about death, resurrection, best person to go to is the creator. So here in the scriptures, in the book of Revelation, the 20th chapter, we want to consider verse 12. It's an interesting direction verse 12 gives us here. It says, I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and scrolls were opened. But another scroll was opened. It is a scroll of life. The dead were judged out of those things written in the scroll according to their deeds. Did you get that point? So here, God first promised to resurrect those in his memory. Second, the scripture helps us appreciate now there is an educational work that will take place. All those who have been resurrected, those who practice what is good, already have a relationship with God, their resurrection, as the scripture mentioned, will be one of life. But what about those who will be judged? This is where the scripture, the scripture here in Revelation help us appreciate. Scrolls will be opened. Come to know who God is so that now they have that opportunity to adjust their ways, adjust their thoughts so as to be in harmony with God's purpose. Now if they decided to follow what God is saying, they have this privilege. Likewise, their resurrection could be one of life. But let's say after a time, you know, they just don't want to. God gave us all that choice. Whether we want to serve him or not, 
He is the one who gives us a choice. Hence the reason why we cannot really condemn someone and say, well, no. The choice was given to us all by God. So if a person chooses to serve God, now their resurrection will be one of life. But if they choose not to, well, the scripture is saying their resurrection will be one of judgment. What will happen? Yes, there will be no more. Is that a, for a very fair way, a loving way? Because sometimes when we think about an individual, we might think about him in the point of, well, you know, he was a good boy or no, he was not, in, in the moment. But God looks at the entirety of an individual. And so, when he gave us the opportunity to learn about him, he might give us that opportunity in a different setting. Right now, we have so many different influences. But God is saying he's going to change the pattern of mankind's living. How he's going to do that? Just want to look at a scripture here and found it, the book in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Just like how we plan in, in life, what, how we want to do in work, school, we plan in life. We want to do this and that and continue. You know God plans also? In the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, we want to consider verses 24 to 28. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 24 to 28. It states, Next, the end. When he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has brought to nothing all government, all authority and power, for he must rule as king until God has put all enemies under his feet. And this is the interesting part, verse 26. And the last enemy, death, is to be brought to nothing. So people living then, no one will die. Verse 24. For God, sorry, verse 27. For God subjected all things under his feet. But when he says that all things have been subjected, it is evident that this does not include the one who subjected all things to him. But when all things would have been subjected to him, then the Son himself will also subject himself to the one who subjected all things to him, that God may be all things to everyone. See, the, see God's plan? See, we didn't have to ask someone, or if we did, if they want to give us God's plan, then they have to go to his words. Just a quote, Isaiah, the 55th chapter, verse 8 and 9. Isaiah tells us that God's thoughts are not our thoughts. That God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts, his ways are higher than ours. So if we want to really do things God's way, then we have to elevate our way elevate our thinking so as to come to know more about God's plan and God's purpose. It's saying that I want to conclude with this final script here just to show the purpose the plan that God have. It's the book of Revelation. The 21st chapter of Revelation. This it's God's purpose for all of mankind. Now when we read this verse, we want to appreciate that this is not something that perhaps might be popular with, with many. Because most people think they live, they die. They gotta go heaven, go hell, or someplace. But when God created man, God did not create man to live somewhere else. He did that with the angels, to live with him. He did creating man 
was to live among here. And so this is what God planned in Revelation 24, chapter, 21st chapter, verses 3 and 4. But then I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, the tent of God is with mankind, and he will reside with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. And he will wipe out every tear from their eyes, and that will be no more. Neither will mourn, no outcry, no pain be anymore. The former things have passed away. God's plan for mankind. Most of us say the Our Father prayer. And you know in that prayer, you know what we are saying? Our Father in your heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So you see what Revelation is telling us? God's plan for mankind, for this earth. It's not for man to live a minute, a minute or two, but it's for man to live forever. The Bible continues giving us that encouragement, helping us appreciate we now could benefit ourselves if we continue making use as of his words. It's like a loving letter sent by someone. And so when you want to remember, you go to that letter. When you want to follow the direction, you go to that letter. This is the letter that God gave us. His words, the Bible. And that letter is for us to read and to appreciate. Even in prayers, when we pray to God, he answers us through his words, the Bible. So this is why, again, we can see the comfort that the Bible has given us. This, cof excuse me, this comfort is for us to appreciate the hope that the Bible encourages us, the encouragement we receive. Don't think about the dead, that's it. Don't think about the dead have different hopes. A resurrection of the dead so that they can really live where they know comfortable right here back on this earth. For more knowledge about that, again, look at the Bible and pay attention to the things that the Bible says so that you and I could draw closer to God. Thank you. So now we have my sister will be singing. Okay. Sorry? Okay.
Thessalonians chapter 5, 6-8 Ye are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not the children of night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night, and they that be drunken and drunken in the night, but let us who are of the day be sober. Put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet of hope and salvation. The word of the Lord. I didn't know my sister could have sing so beautiful. Well, we want to conclude our service with a word of prayer. Oh. Hear me now? Oh, excellent. We want to conclude with a word of prayer and then we make our way. Oh, and then my sister wants to sing for you all again. But I, I need to see some little enthusiasm though. Yes, we might be in the house of mourning, but the songs give us some joy. But let's pray. Serving God Jehovah, how wonderful you are that you give us the opportunity to come before you through the merits of your son, Christ Jesus. You direct us, you prepare us, you help us to understand your will and purpose for mankind. And most importantly, you continually give us examples of your love. And because of such, we today could reflect that love. We could be loving to one another. This situation that we are in here, even though it's a sad situation because of the death of someone, but for the fact that we are here, it does show that we are here to comfort and encourage 
just like how we have been comforted and encouraged by you. We thank you, Jehovah God, for the friends, the family, the acquaintances of my brother. Give us an opportunity to reflect on the things that he did when he was alive. And now, believe things in your care and keeping. We appreciate, Jehovah, that you are God of mercy. Yes, tender mercy. And so because of such, you give mankind the opportunity to have a hope despite that. So please help us, Jehovah God, to remember the things that were said. Meditate on it. And continue opening our vocabulary so that we could have that relationship with you. Knowing indeed, you promise mankind life everlasting. So it's not just for a short time, but we could live and enjoy life forever. Thank you, Jehovah, for your undeserved kindness. And thank you again for those who are in our midst to give us strength and comfort, hoping that we do the same. We beg pardon for our errors. We beg for your mercies as we express these thoughts in your name, but in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jordan, thou 
step now is <laughs> the cemetery again uh, when it comes to grief can't say how much we should grieve can't say who should grieve but we also want to think not just of grieving but we really want to rejoice as well for the fact that we are here to encourage one another yes we are still alive so let us find ways that we can encourage one another now and as time go by. So yes, we are going to the cemetery. Um, if any directions is needed, you can always see one of the family members. So thank you for showing up. And again, we could always be our last, as they say, walk around. Thank you.
God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planet is born. If the stars were made to worship, so alive, I can see your heart. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises so
You are the word I thought. 